Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, all week we've been talking about the wisdom of the Word of God or the wisdom of God's Word. Now, it's important you understand these things I'm sharing with you because um, these have caused a lot of failure in the lives of a lot, a lot of God's children. And sometimes it's so confusing that they don't even know what is right from what is wrong anymore. But you know, why are we talking about this? Because you begin to see there is nothing you're facing that is not uh, God have not paid attention to in dealing with in terms of instructing or an example that have been lived. Praise God. So, uh, as we do these teachings, now I don't know if we'll finish this this week or we'll carry it into next month. Let's just see how the Lord's going to help us. It's actually very broad. But if we're going to lay the foundation now and then delve into it properly next month, let's just see what the Lord would help us achieve. That's what he's telling us to talk about now. So let's face now. It is good. Are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Join me now in faith. And say, Father, I demand from you today my daily bread is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, we, we are looking at what Peter said. Talking to newborn babes. And... I've shown you how Peter said there are certain things you must do yourself first. I haven't done that. Then desire the pure milk of the word. And then we're reading from Hebrews yesterday. And Hebrews showed us something very, very important. Hebrews now telling us that there is um, the milk and there is solid food. Okay, and, and let's, let's take it from Hebrews again, from verse 12. Say, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracle of God. You remember Peter spoke and said, if any man should speak, let him speak as the oracle of the Lord. Now here, the writer of Hebrews is telling us that there is the first principle of the oracles of God. The first principle. So, meaning if you want to speak as the oracle of God, there is a first thing you must know. And what is that first thing? Is exactly what Peter listed for us. Should we run it down? Or run by it? Let's look at it. Don't, don't close your hand from there. It says, 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 1. It says, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. I told you, all these things culminate in what comes out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth? Evil speaking. Now, he said, if any man will speak, be careful to speak as the oracle of God. So any word that is coming out of your mouth should be what God has commanded you to say. I said, can we really live like that? Now, he's not telling us anything strange. He's telling us exactly what Jesus said. I told, I told you yesterday, Peter is a rock upon which Christ is building his church. So everything Peter says Number one, it connects with what Jesus thought. Number two, um, he's saying it by the Spirit of God in line with building the church that Jesus spoke about. Now, so Jesus said in John, I think I should show you that scripture, John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Where is my John chapter 12? Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 12 and verse 
49 and 50. He said, For I have not spoken on my own authority. Jesus speaking here. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Now let's go back to Second Peter. He says, the, the oracle, we must speak as the oracle of God. What does it mean speak as the oracle of God? Make sure what is coming out of your mouth is what God has commanded you to say. Now, this is not, not just when you are preaching. Every word that is coming out of your mouth. Uh, do you mean, if I say anything, I say, Holy Spirit, I, I, should I say this? See, first and foremost, it gets malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking out of the way. Deliberately get it out. How do you get it out? Listen, I'm not going to walk in malice again. I will not walk in malice again. That's a decision you make. I will not be deceiving myself or anyone again. I will not function in hypocrisy again. This is me. If I don't like something, I'll tell you I don't like it and this is why I don't like it. I'm not going to say, hey, 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 hey. foolish man. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to face, if I don't like something, I'll state it. I'll make it clear to you. No more hypocrisy. No more loving you front before you and hating you behind you. That's hypocrisy. No more thing, oh, this is who I am. But when you know that's not who you are, that's deceit and hypocrisy. Praise God. It says, envy. I'm not going to envy anyone. Why? Because see, God has given me everything. So why should you even envy anyone? Paul said, all things are yours. So why should you envy anyone? Now it says envy. And all evil speaking. No evil word is going to come out of this mouth again. Instead of me to say any word that is evil, I'd rather keep quiet. I'd rather hold my mouth. I'd rather not speak than speak evil words. Now those are your personal decisions you take. Why are you taking those decisions? Because you want to function as the oracle of God. And this is the first principle of functioning as the oracle of God. If not, there are, there are these two things that will happen in your life. You will begin to prophesy. You know what I mean by prophesy? You begin to say the wrong things. Later in your life, you begin to say the wrong things. Number two, you begin to live the wrong life. Yes, because your life goes where your mouth goes. See? So if you don't watch your mouth, it will carry you. Just like, you know, you know your head, your body goes where your head goes. You know that. You can try that out. Simple experiment. Stand on a straight line and you can measure a line or something or put something there to mark a line. Stand on a straight line and then shut your eyes. Turn your head in one direction, maybe to the right or to the left, and walk with your foot straight. Because your head is turned. Even if you don't close your eyes, because your head is turned. And keep your eyes there where you're turned and start walking. You realize you are walking on a straight line according to your body. But by the time you open your eyes, you've moved to the right or to the left of that line, depending on where your face was looking. If you were looking to the left, you realize that you have moved to the left. You are looking to the right. Now, why? Because your body will go where your, eye, your face is, where your face is actually. Okay, so the same thing, your life will go where your mouth is going. Your life will go where your words are going. It's as simple as that. Hey, but I don't say the wrong words. I don't say, I, I try to speak positively. It's not just speaking positively. What are you saying? See, what are you saying? So the first priest, and, and, and this is how you know, you, it's not just you practicing um, speaking positively. You get rid of these things from your heart first. Once you get rid of them from your heart, then the sincere, pure milk of the word, you begin to ingest it to strengthen you. Now, you begin to know, oh, this is really why I shouldn't keep malice. Now, those are the things you realize along the way. Okay, now why is that important? We'll go back to Hebrews 5. 
Hebrews 5, you know, he was telling us the first principle of the oracles of God. And have become, now, let's take it again. For though by this time ye ought to be teachers, ye need someone to teach you again the first principle of the oracles of, the, of God. And have become, and have come to need milk. Now because you miss the first principle of the oracle of God. You are supposed to be teachers right now. But there's a problem. You miss functioning as the oracle of God because you miss the first principles. Okay? Now he says, so you have come back to that place where, hey, we need to go back to your foundation. You need to desire milk first. And I was telling you something yesterday. Peter said, let's, let's go there. You know, we're flipping through between Hebrews and, and Peter. This is so important. Peter said, verse 3, If indeed ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So I was telling you yesterday, I said, look, when you come to Christ, it's not just the confession you have made. What response have you received from him? That's very important. As you are now, beyond going to church, beyond the assumption that you feel God is with you, okay? That can be an assumption, you know that, right? What evidence do you have personally, beyond any reasonable doubt, that God is gracious to you? What's your testimony? See, now when he says God is gracious to me, there's, there's something to that I need to point out. You've heard people say things like this. Now, ah, when I just got born again, everything was just working for me. I'll just pray and I'll get answer. I'll just do this and I'll see it come to pass. One time I even pray, I say, Lord, I feel like eating jello fries. Do you know what happened? Do you know somebody came to my house that day with exact jello fries that, go, that I, I had this urge? And I just said it to, it's not like I even told it. I didn't, trust me, I didn't tell anybody. I just said it that kind. I mean, I like to eat jello fries. And exactly the kind of jello fries I needed came. Man, God is gracious. Now that's it, see? Now, not just in food. In different things. Yeah, wow. Now, what's that? The graciousness of God. Why is it called the graciousness of God? Because it is tied, it is not tied to anything that you have done. It's not tied to any serious prayer you have prayed. It's not tied to any physical. You just got saved. See, you just got saved. Now I say when you see that thing happening in your life, what's it telling you? It means God have accepted you. Mm-hmm. God have accepted you. Now, the first place God displays his graciousness is in the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, there is no work you are going to do that will qualify you to receive the Holy Spirit. No. God gives it to you freely because he is gracious. So, you are saved and you realize you have the ability to speak in tongues. God is already so gracious to you. Praise God. Oh, yes. Is so gracious to you. So Peter is saying, if you have seen that God is gracious to you, then you are seeing that he has accepted you. And having seen that he has accepted you, put away this thing, then go for the milk. Now, let's go back to Hebrews. Now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you know, I just have to start again from verse 2. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principle of all the oracles of God and have come to need milk and not solid food. So Hebrews is telling us that there is milk and then there is solid food. Now, what's the difference? Now, both food or both things you, you ingest or take in is the word of God. So what is the milk? What is the solid food you know the other day i was talking to you about the book of enoch and, and the rest of them of course if you if you read this with the bible for example you know even then they had the book of psalms the book, the book of psalms was everywhere praise <laughs> god and then they had the prophets okay now in the book of psalms it's easy you know how um even people who are not people are just people got saved one of the books you will love to read is the book of is, is the Psalms. Okay. Oh, I just love the book. It's easy to explain. It's, it's, it's self-explanatory. No much drama. It just tells us ah, wonderful. But you know, there are deep things in the book of Psalms. So when you see him say, Sela, 
See, uh, he's telling you, think there's something here that you need the Holy Spirit to interpret for you. Praise God. Okay, so now, so there is milk and then there is solid food. Okay, and they are not the same. And he goes on to say that everyone that uses milk, that's what he said in, in verse 13, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in what? Is unskilled in the word of righteousness, in the word of righteousness. He is unskilled in the word of righteousness. Now, what's the word of righteousness? The teaching of the righteousness of God. He's saying there is a skill that is needed. There is a, follow me carefully, there is a skill that is needed in the word of righteousness. You need to acquire that skill. And you cannot have that skill if you're feeding on milk. That's why I say, if you're still feeding on milk, the reason you're still feeding on milk is because you are unskilled in the word of righteousness. Jesus, let me show you a scripture in John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verse 30. Jesus, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, some Jews, however they got to know that they have believed him, whether they gathered themselves and came to him and said, ah, now we believe what you're saying, okay? Now, the previous verse actually told us many Jews believed in him. Now, then Jesus said to those Jews who believe in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you abide in my word. Jesus here was referring to the ability. If you have the ability to abide in my word. Now, this thing he is saying, if you have the ability to abide in my word, he, you know what he's talking about? He's talking about pure milk. It's pure milk he was referring to. Now, I want you to realize something Jesus said here. He says, if you abide in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. Mm -hmm. So you don't know the truth from the beginning. We're talking about the wisdom of God's word. You don't know the truth from the beginning. You know the truth after you have proven yourself as a disciple. And so Jesus said, if you abide in my word, what does it mean if you abide, if you abide in my teachings? The things I am teaching you. And, and, and guess what? Everything Jesus taught is what? Pure milk. All the teachings of Jesus, they are milk. Huh? Yes, they are milk. You remember Jesus said to his disciples, said, there are many things I have to tell you, but I cannot tell you now. But when the Holy Spirit comes, uh-huh, he will teach you all things. Okay, okay. So Jesus spent his time teaching the word of milk, pure milk. So when you read the teachings of Jesus, everything written in red, in your Bible, if you have the physical Bible, even the electronic Bible these days, also they have the, the, the words of Jesus in red. If you read those things, all those things, Jesus was speaking of milk. And re you remember what, what um, Peter was saying get rid of all these things so the same thing jesus was teaching from the beatitudes when he started teaching on the mount the sermon on the mount from those beatitudes he was teaching them then he went on to tell them teach them how to behave and those things are in your power those things are in your will so when you read them you make up your mind this is how i am going to act this is how i am going to live See, so when Jesus says, if someone slaps you on this side, turn the other side to slap. Literally, he wants you to live like that. But now I see what will sustain that life. What will give you the ability to be able to not just do it for once, to be able to go into that life is the truth. But before you come to the place 
of the truth. That's why I say you shall know the truth and the truth shall bring you liberty. So now, someone slaps you on this side. Hmm. I won't fight you. If you want to slap me on this side, too, you are free to slap me on that side. Why do you hear Jesus? Well, that's what Jesus said we should do. But you're wondering, but why? Why doesn't Jesus want us to react? I can beat this guy. I mean, I mean, God, I mean, jokes apart. I can fin I would deal with this guy and finish him. He doesn't stand near me. But see how he insulted me and 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 because of Jesus, I can't do anything. Now, what have you done? You have shown yourself to be acquainted with milk. But then there's a problem. You are not yet skillful. You see that? That's why you're still thinking, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. if not for Jesus, eh, what I would have done to this person. You're not yet skillful. Now, as you, what happens to you then? One day, I'm telling you, this is, this is what you will experience. If you've not already started experiencing it in different areas in your life. One day, the Holy Spirit will just tell you, do you know why I don't want you to respond? Ah, now what's happening? Truth is coming. You see? He is the one that will now bring you into the place of truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up. Praise God. Thank you. And we're just getting into it now. Praise God. Oh, Father, we bless you for today. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. We enjoy your presence. Let everyone at the sound of my voice receive your presence also in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.